In the last video, I introduced you to SurveyCTO's Data Explorer and showed you how it might be used to monitor incoming data. In this video, I'll continue on to show you a few of the Data Explorer's more advanced features. In the last video, I had added a few relationship views to consider the relationship between a numerator and survey duration and consent. Now I'm going to show you a different approach to how you might explore a numerator performance. I'm going to use what's called global filters. So I'm going to go down to my enumerators here. And I want to look a bit more closely at Joanna's performance. So what I'm going to do is click and say, add to global data filter. I'm going to confirm that. Now what happens now is that Joanna is highlighted here in the graph. There's a little note here that says that this field is included in a global data filter. And I also have a global bar here to alert me to the fact that my data has been filtered. And I can view that filter and see that I'm filtering by enumerator is Joanna Moyo. So what this means is that basically my entire workbook now, the data has been filtered down to a subset. And that subset is right now only the observations from Joanna. So I can see now that my n has gone from 18 to 5. So I can see that Joanna has only been in Manika land. Actually, only in Mutari, no Chimani Mani observations. If I go down now to the, to the map view, GPS locations, I see that I can see exactly the five households that Joanna visited. And I can see Joanna's consent performance. So this was uh, what concerned us a bit in the last video, the fact that in Joanna's case, four out of five interviews have re refused informed consent. I'm going to go ahead and actually zoom in further because I want to look specifically at the refusal cases. I'm going to go ahead and add this also to the global data filter, consent equals zero. So take a moment. So now we can see fields included in data filter two. And if I view the data filter, I can see that I'm filtering by the enumerator is Joanna and consent is zero. So you can see now, for example, if we go back up to the map view, I'm now down to four observations. These are specifically the four households that refused informed consent when Joanna visited them. So that's one way that I can look at my data all through my form, only for a certain selected subset of the cases. So I'm going to go ahead and clear that data filter. I'll now show you another feature of the Data Explorer that's handy when there are outliers in your graphs making the uh, display not as attractive or not as useful as you would like. So take, for example, my duration graph here. It's a histogram, and I can use this number of bins slider to sort of show more or less detail in the histogram. You can see that I have this outlier here, this maximum value of 399, and I might want to focus on only this range of values in the graph. So what I'm going to do I'm going to head and click on that and say exclude from this summary. Now what's going to happen is that's going to just drop that value out. It's going to show a little warning up at the top that says some values have been excluded. And I can view that and I can also clear those exclusions. But you can see now that my maximum value in the summary is now down to 311. I could go ahead and also exclude that value, and I could exclude this one also. And so now you can see that I'm down to the 15 observations that are within the range that I want to look at most closely. I don't have a lot of data here, so this isn't the most realistic example, but you can use this technique to essentially remove any outliers from a graph in order to zero in on the parts of that graph or that summary that you find most interesting. You might also have certain values like negative 888 or negative 999 for refusal or don't know, and you might want to remove those values from the graph so that the mean value, standard deviation, min and max aren't influenced by those special codes. So I'm going to go ahead and close, clear those exclusions. 
Finally, there might be certain observations that you want to exclude from your entire workbook, from your analysis altogether. So for example, this might be a, a test submission or a submission that's been uh, checked and determined not to be uh, valid or not to meet your study criteria for some reason. So for example, if we go down back down to my duration field. Let's say I click on this 399 max person. Let's say that this observation, for whatever reason, I decide uh, shouldn't be included in my workbook. What I can do is I can click on View Options and say Exclude Submission from Summaries. You'll see that there's a little icon here to indicate that it's been excluded. And if I now close this view, what happens is my entire workbook will update. And you see that I have this Submissions Globally Excluded note that follows me around. I could even, you know, view the excluded submissions and I can unexclude uh, submissions either one at a time or I can clear them all. But you can see now that I'm down to 17 submissions and that particular case that I excluded is no longer included. I can likewise, from any of the views, say, zoom in on a submission and say, I want to exclude it. And again, now you can see that Submissions Globally Excluded has updated to two. So I could zoom in on those two, I could look at them, I could also unexclude them. Uh, but this way, now I can focus on the 16 real observations that I want to focus on. Let me go ahead and clear that. And that's it for this video. Thanks for joining me.